Hello and welcome to Using Future Climate Projections. This is uh, part of the ACAIRN education series. My name is Trevor Murdoch. I'm a climate scientist with the Pacific Climate Impacts Consortium, uh, where I lead the regional climate impacts theme. Uh, and I've been at uh, climate science for about 20 years. And uh, my colleague, Kari Tyler, will also be presenting uh, one of the later sections. And we want to acknowledge uh, our colleague, Stephen Sobey, who is responsible for a lot of the, uh, the graphics that you'll be seeing. The first part of the series is uh, climate change concepts. Uh, if you watch all three of these videos, it'll be about 30 minutes. A uh, fair number of maps, um, some photos, uh, not any cartoons, and uh, if you didn't find this slide funny, uh, that 5% of humor is, is not accurate. Um, all right, so what all of these uh, maps and plots and everything are going to add up to is just two basic things. Uh, that taking future climate into account is necessary uh, and possible. Uh, and so that's, uh, th that's, that's what we're going to delve into. All right, so first thing, we're going to start off with some climate uh, concepts. And the basic, most basic one is just the difference between weather and climate. Uh, we all know this already, so this is kind of review. Uh, weather is the conditions at a specific location and time, and climate is the long-term statistics of weather, uh, a nice Kind of saying for this is that weather is what you uh, what you put on for the day uh, in terms of clothing, and climate is what you have in your closet. Uh, so I'm going to use this example uh, from uh, December 2nd, 2005, as a real example. I was in Montreal for a climate conference, and I phoned back to my family. I was talking to them. They live in Victoria. Uh, it was six degrees and snowing in one of those places, and 19 degrees and sunny. Uh, and so usually uh, we'll have the audience. Uh, sort of guess which one of these two places. So between Victoria and Montreal, uh, was it first, uh, was it snowing, who thinks it's snowing and cold in Victoria versus uh, sunny in Montreal? Uh, and if I do this and then ask the same question, who thinks it was sunny in Victoria and, and snowing in Montreal, usually about half and half uh, of folks will guess on that particular day. And of course, unless you have an eidetic memory and knew exactly what happened on that day, uh, there's really no way of knowing weather can do weird things. Uh, if you know the Victoria and Montreal, though, you'd know that that's kind of unusual, that it was 6 degrees and snowing in Victoria and 19 degrees and sunny in Montreal. Uh, that can be the particular weather on a particular day. But if you, instead of that one December day, ask, what's the weather? Let's take every day of uh, every December from 1971 through to 2000, so 31 days times 30 years, uh, at each of these two locations and average them together. And if you do that, you get uh, plus 4 Celsius uh, for Victoria and minus 6 degrees Celsius for Montreal. Uh, and you get about four times as much snow in uh, Montreal than Victoria. And even that four times as much snow seems like maybe a small, you know, like the fraction should be even larger. Uh, and for anyone who was living in Victoria in 1996, they'll recall there was uh, quite a big snow year that year. It was record-breaking snowfall that year. So it kind of hints at the next concept, which is climate variability. Um, just that one year in that 30-year record actually brings the average for Victoria up quite a bit. Without that one, um, this ratio would be quite a, bit, quite a bit bigger. All right, so we'll get into that climate varying first uh, by location. Um, and well, lo both location and time. So if you look at that sort of asterisk there, somewhere in BC, uh, sort of about in the middle of BC, uh, you'll see that this summer of 2003 uh, was warmer than, you, than normal. What this map is showing is in yellow and orange and red colors, uh, locations that were warmer than the historical 1951 to 80 average. And then in the blue colors, locations that were colder than, than that 51 to 80 average. Now, the darker the shading, the, the further from, from average. And so we were in this you know, 1 to 2 degrees warmer than normal in summer of 2003. And, uh, but what was happening in BC in that year was the Kelowna wildfires. Now, there's not a direct relationship between a warmer than normal year or warmer than normal summer and wildfires, but there is a relationship. Uh, and, you know, we've had a couple of warmer than normal years the last, the last few years with uh, record-breaking wildfires again. Uh, and if you look at up in the corner uh, there, circled in red, uh, 0.49 degrees, that's globally how much warmer this uh, whole summer was than the, the 51 to 80 average. Uh, but I sh if also if you notice, there are some places on the map that are colder than normal, Japan, for example, um, not a lot of places colder than normal, but there are, there are some. 
And we'll see that as we go forward to a couple more examples. So now we'll move forward to July 2010. Uh, and again, looking at that asterisk in BC, uh, now we're in a colder than normal um, July. And this was, uh, this was a year where we'd had a couple of La Nina years in a row. These are usually associated with colder than normal winters and springs. Uh, and we happen to just have, th I think this was the third year in a row with a uh, very late start to summer. So uh, we had this cold spring and it, even still in July it was colder than normal. So you know, we were wondering in BC when will summer ever arrive? It'd be nice to have some global warming around here. It was you know, kind of the, the headlines. Um, but if you look at the rest of the globe, first of all, the circle up there, 0 0.50. So this is almost identical globally um, to the previous image that we saw. So even though it was cold here, we just happened to be that one or one of the few colder than normal places. Um, some of South America was colder than normal as well and, and parts of Asia. Um, but other parts of Asia and well, over Russia, uh, there was a large heat wave um, during, during this uh, summer and in fact wildfires there as well, so record-breaking wildfires. So that's sort of climate varying in uh, space and time. And now this is actually a figure we're going to go in much more detail in the next, uh, in the next section. Um, but just to set up um, some of the concepts here that we'll go into. Uh, the first one is again climate varying in time. So what we're looking at now is British Columbia's uh, temperature record historically. So if you look at the black uh, wiggly lines uh, in the past, this is, uh, if you average over all of BC, what was, uh, what was the temperature um, over the last sort of, a little bit more than half century. Uh, you see with some years that are colder than normal, some years that are warmer than normal. All of, all of these numbers are shown as the difference from the 1971 to 2000 average. Uh, and then the, the three lines off to the right are three different scenarios of uh, what will happen in terms of BC's average temperature in future uh, under, under different assumptions around how much greenhouse gases uh, we will emit. Uh, and we'll go into this in more detail in the next, the next section. Mm -hmm.